بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My dear brothers and my respected sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In the beginning we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to send his blessing upon us and also we thank him and we praise him in the best way fits his glory and his majesty. My dear brother and sister, we are still continuing with the treasure for success and the last time we spoke about the times and the deeds and the words which Allah سبحانه وتعالى opened the gates of the heavens. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His mercy has given us so many opportunities, so many chances so we can get close to Him. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people who, who, who focus, especially in this month of Ramadan, and try to do the best of it so He can reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, yawm al qiyamah and all His sins being forgiven. Allahumma ameen. My dear brother and sister, we know the, the, the Laylatul Qadr is almost there. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people who will reach Laylatul Qadr and will pray in Laylatul Qadr and Allah Azawajal will accept from him the prayers and the fasting and the Qiyam in the Laylatul Qadr. Allahumma ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, tonight I'm going to mention to you the people who going, who are those people which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the gates of the heavens. This topic is very dear to me and I'm sure it's very dear to all of you because all of us will experience these things. All of us will, will go through this journey and that will happen with our soul will escape from our body. My dear brother and sister, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reminding the Sahaba and also reminding us because this word in life is nothing more except like one traveler who just carry on and he stops under the tree, take a rest and then he carry on. We are not being made to live in this world of life forever. None of us, if anyone deserved to live, to live in this world forever was going to be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But what we do in this world this is the word of ibtila. Allah tests us so Allah can see from us which of us will do the best deed. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Quran, Allah Zujari, he glorifies himself. And then he says, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. He is the one who created the life and death for one reason, so he can test me and you, so he can see from us which of us will do the best deeds. And we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to give us the tawfiq so we can do the best deeds insha'Allah. My dear brother and sister, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reminding the Sahaba for one thing which will cut the all pleasures of this world in life and that is death. Yes, that's right. Every human being from the day he is born, every single time, every single hour, every single year, He's getting closer and closer and closer to go back to that home which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us either in Jannah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be from those people of the Jannah insha'Allah. That's why my brother is a scholar. Some of the scholars was mentioned beautiful poem about he describing the, the righteous people, how they look in this worldly life. And he was saying, Inna lillahi ubadan futana. طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا فتنا فلما علموا أن الدنيا ليس للحي فيها وطنا اتخذوا لجة وجعلوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا. He said Allah subhanahu wa taala has chosen very smart and righteous from among his slaves. Who are those? Those people who divorce the dunya from their life. They have the dunya in their hands, but they have the akhirah in their hearts. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people. What they did with this dunya, اتخذوا لجتن. Because when they see nobody live in this dunya for, forever, neither the righteous people, neither the worst people, then they took this dunya as a river. And they took the good deeds as a boat so he can cross this river to the other side. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people who cross this river with the good deeds so we can go to the home, sweet home. Allahum Amin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let us focus in this. Who are those people which the gates of the heaven will be open for them? Imagine, my dear brother and sister, imagine you go in colleges and you go in school and then you, after your exam, you're waiting for your result. And let's imagine, because I know every, every imagination springs from our observation. So to bring it close to you, the feeling what will happen to me and you in that day, imagine you go and to get your result in a college and you're waiting for your principal or somebody to call in a mic and mention your name and give you the good news and give you the how good you are and describe you with the most beautiful names and characteristics, how you will feel. And imagine if you go over there and suddenly you see the man or the principal come out and his voice is changed and his face is changed. And when you mention your name, he doesn't give you any credit. He doesn't show you any, any good characteristic and attribute. He just say, this man, he fell. How you will feel? That's exactly what's going to happen with us, for the, with the believers and with the non-believers. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people which the Prophet ﷺ described in Hadith Bara ibn Azib as we're going to go through that quickly, inshallah. The people which the gates of the heavens will be open. Who are those? Then, after all this introduction, for sure you, you can guess because those are the true believers. The people who believe in correct belief. The people who have chosen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be his guide, to be his example, to be his role model, because the Prophet ﷺ says, كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبا. He said, all my ummah will enter in Jannah, except those who refuse. So the Sahaba, they were a little bit surprised. They were amazed. They said, Ya Rasulullah, is there, is there anyone who refused to enter in Jannah? La ilaha illallah. Is there anyone who doesn't want to go in Jannah, the Prophet ﷺ says, yes. He says, Man ata'ani dakhal al-Jannah. Whoever obeys me, follows me, he will enter in Jannah. That is the, the result, that is the gift. And whoever disobeys me and do not follow me and doesn't take me as a role model, but he has choose somebody else beside me, then for sure he has rejected the Jannah. And I'm sure all of you, as you love the Prophet ﷺ, same time you follow his footsteps, just like the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, one of the time in, in Janazah for one of the Ansar, he sit with the Sahaba around the grave of that man, sad. And the Sahaba was listening to him carefully. And the Prophet ﷺ repeat to them three times by saying to them, Ista'idu billahi min adab al qabr ask refuge, ask refuge in Allah from the punishment on the, on, on, of the grave. That is the scary part, my dear brother and sister. Uthman ibn Affan and so many Sahaba, when somebody was re reminding them that the Qabr, they were starting weeping, they were start crying. Why? When they asked, Ya Amir Munir, why this happened to you? When we mentioned the Jannah and Nar, you do not get uh, emotional, the way how you get emotion when somebody remember your grave, he say because this is the first step, this is the first board, the first step of the akhirah. If you win in here, if you ach achieve that result, if the angel here prepare you and take you in the heavens as we're going to see it, then everything after that is easy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people who always reflect and look what we have prepared 
when we meet Allah Azawajal. If the call is today, if the call from angels is tomorrow, we know we passed 40 years, we passed 20, we know that. But how much left? Can anybody of us tell how much left? Could be one minute, could be one hour, hour, could be one day. We could be in a list of the dead people and the angel is waiting his time and we think we have so much to go. So what I should do, what we have to do, as the Salaf says, إِحْسِنْ مَا بَقِيَّ يُغْفَرْ لَكَ مَا مَضَى Fix, show the best of you what's left so Allah can forgive you what passed. So how we do that? By making the tawbah and istighfar and ask Allah Azawajal to open for us a new page. لَأَنَّ أَتَّعِبُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَنْ لَا ذَنْبَ لَهُ we have, we do it tijara with, tijara with Allah, business with Allah. The Prophet says the one who repent from the sin like he has never has done that sin. You remember the hadith where the Aisha was asking for Laylatul Qadr to wipe away the sin. My dear brother and sister, the Prophet said to the Sahabi, he says, billahi min al qabr. Then he says, إن العبد المؤمن إذا كان في انقطاع من الدنيا وإقبال من الآخرة when the person, the slave, the believer, or any person, he is about to depart from this worldly life and enter in the hereafter, then the soul escape. There's so many things will change. Subhanallah. His eyes will look something else. His eyes will be sharp. He will not be anymore like, the, like when he was before the soul come out. Alhamdulillah, Allah from His mercy, He limited our eyes. We cannot see so much, alhamdulillah. Imagine if you see everything. If you see in your hands your germs and you see your bacteria, you cannot be, and you see around you, everything is moving. You cannot leave. Imagine if you hear everything. You hear the ants and the mosquito and any insect in the wall and inside the wall and outside. Can you sleep? Allah from His mercy, He took, He limit our eyes and our ears. That's why when Musa asked to see Allah, Allah said, you cannot see me here. Not in the dunya. For the akhirah, there are different eyes. So, basaru qayyum aydin hadid. Your eyes will be sharp. So, this is the first stage when the, uh, our eyes and our sight will be different. That person, when the, when the angels will come to take his soul, he will see them. The Prophet ﷺ says, in that time, نَزَلَ إِلَيْهِ مَلَائِكَةٌ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ The angels from the heaven will come with beautiful faces, white faces, shiny faces, like a sun. So subhanAllah, he already, he already sees the maghfir and the mercy of Allah from the beginning. Beautiful faces. Imagine the angels in groups come and they see as far as the eye can see. He's, they're waiting for the angel of death. What they have brought me there? They have brought all the package for that beautiful soul. They have brought the cover from the Jannah, and they have brought the perfume from the Jannah, and they pre waiting. So the angel of death, which Allah has ordered him to take the soul to come, and the time the soul will be came, come out smoothly and nicely, just like a drop of water falling from the cup, the angels, these beautiful angels, chosen one, they will take their soul, your soul, my soul, and ask Allah to make us from. Just imagine the beautiful picture. They will take the soul in easy way and they will cover with this cover from the paradise and they will put this beautiful misk with the prophet's perfume. What the prophet says is there is no any perfume in earth you can imagine. But the prophet tried to give, give us the description of our imagination can, can move and can see, observe from our observation, because what we see, that's why the Prophet says, when we mentioned in Jannah about the, the apples and the trees and the, and the couches, he say, this is ju just the names. These names, what you hear, this is just the name, but nothing can be close what is waiting for them. But Allah has given us the name so we can at least understand a little bit. But when you go in Jannah, there is مَا لَا عَيْنُ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنُ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ The Prophet says there is something which your eyes have never seen, your ears have ever heard of, and your heart can never comprehend, can never understand what is waiting for you. My dear brothers and sisters, don't you already start missing the Jannah? Don't you already start missing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
when this angel of death will come, he will say, أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الطَّيِّبَةِ فِي جَسْدِ الطَّيِّبِ أُخْرُجِي إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٍ Look at the, look at the beautiful words. Look at the nice talk. He said, hey, oh, oh, pure soul from the pure body. Of course. Nafs mutma'inna. It's coming from the pure body. How the, when the heart is pure, with, full with iman, what will happen to your body? You remember the hadith of the Prophet Nu'man ibn Bashir, fi Sahih Muslim, the Prophet says, inna fil jasadi mudgha. In our body, there is a part, there is a piece of meat. إِذَا صَلُحَ صَلُحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ If that part is right, righteous, full of iman, you, you parts of your body, your limbs become changed. You will act differently, your body will act different, you will look different, you will dress different, you will talk different, you will act different. And if that heart is corrupt, then you will see that on you, on your body. So when they say, oh, you pure soul, come out from the pure body, because your body is reflecting on that iman, and he says, come out to the forgiveness and the pleasure of Allah. The news from Allah is coming because the angels, they never talk from themselves. So already the news come to this beautiful soul. May Allah make you and me from them. Imagine my brother, and the soul will come so easy. Like I told her, like a drop of water falling, falling from the cup. First thing we will do, this angel will take the soul, will cover it with a beautiful uh, covering from the Jannah, beautiful perfume, and will prepare it to take him up where? To the first heaven. Do you remember we say the heavens, they have doors, they have guardians, they have protection. So the first heaven, when they will go as they see, the al mala, mala. They will, they, this soul will pass among them, not the group of the mala min al malaika. Mala, the word mala means the honored one, the chosen one, group of the malaika. They will see you have to pass through them. Imagine the picture. And they will say, Ma hadha ruh al tayyib. Who is this pure soul? Smells so beautiful. Pure, so beautiful. And the angels who's carrying you, my brother, and me, inshallah, say inshallah, because Allah. We believe in him. We believe in Prophet Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook our shortcomings and forgive us. And give us that nafsu tayyibah. Nafsu al-mutma'inna. Allahumma ameen. Wa lisa thalika ala Allahi bi'aziz. And nothing is hard for Allah to do it. And Allah azza wa jal, we have husnul dhan. We always think about our creator best way. Because we know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. We know how big is His mercy. We know Allah has put one mercy. All this what you see today. Our, the, we with our kids, with our family, with our wives, with our neighbor in a society, the animals. All this is just for one mercy of Allah. 99 He left it for you and me in Jannah. Can you imagine that? So these angels, they will tell them, this man, this pure soul is so and so the son of so and so or so and so the daughter of so and so and they will name and mention him the beautiful names and and and, and nicknames and attributes he was known to be mentioned in dunya my question is my brother and sister what are your unique names what are your qualities your labels because that's what we're going to be mentioned Raju Sali, righteous man Righteous woman, woman with hijab, woman who just proper, who pray salah, who pray qiyam, who respect the neighbors, who respect the husband, who respect the wife, who respect the mother, who respect the father, who respect each other, who give charity, who worship in Allah, who, who, who stay away from haram. Imagine these titles and every of these titles, Allah will call you and the angels will call in you. So make sure, my dear brothers and sisters, what are your nicknames? How the people calling you? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a beautiful nicknames from among the people because those people will be witness for us, Yom al Qiyamah. So show the best of you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by changing yourself and opening new page in this month of Ramadan. My dear brothers and sisters, when these names will become to that person, 
and they will go to the first heaven, they will ask, who is this man? They will ask the heaven to be open, and the heaven will be open. And that in that place of the heaven, my dear brothers and sisters, and between the first heaven and the seventh heaven, as Abdullah ibn Masood mentioned, hadith mawquf, but he's the hukum of the hadith is marfu because he's speaking about something which no human being can know unless there is a revelation from the Prophet of Allah, and the Prophet of Allah took it from Allah Azza wa Jal. He said the distance between the first heaven and the other heaven is the five hundred years of the of the of the distance. 500 years, if there is a, a ride with a fast horse to cut it off, it needs 500 years. And the thickness of the first heaven is also 500 years. So imagine. So then that heaven will open. Their place, my brother and sister, they will wait for them, the other malaika, and they will prepare, and they cover with the, the, the more, in more, much decoration and garments and beautiful jewelry will put in that soul and the par perfume so they can prepare for the next heaven. And he will go up to the next heaven. And there in other preparation for the next heaven. And every single heaven, the doors will be open and open and open until they reach to the last heaven, and that is the seventh one. one. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Uktubu kitab abdi fi illiyin. He has reached to that level. Allah says, record the book of my servant in the highest, illiyun. Illiyin is the highest place in heaven. So he already got the news. The package is already there. The gift is already there. Can you imagine? And you are still not yet went down to the grave. You are not yet in a, in a question of the Adab al-Qabr. This is what happened to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Muttafifin. Who are those people fi illiyin? Kalla inna kitab al-abrar la fi illiyin. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا عِلِّيُّونَ كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ يَشْهَدُهُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٌ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ تعرف في وجوههم نظرة النعيم يسقون من رحيق مختوم ختامه مسك وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون Allah described in Surah Mutaffifin Who are those people in Iliyin? How they will be? Which kind of qualities they will have, which kind of a record they will show, who are those witnesses who will witness for him in that day, the angels, and how they will live in the pleasure, in couches, and enjoyments, and the face will be uh, smiley and, and radiance and, uh, and showing the pleasures from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brother and sister, can you imagine if you and me is one of them? Subhanallah. After this, after this beautiful news, you already has given the VIP. You already has given the visa for the Jannah. Allah says, but yet, the time is not to go. You know, like, just example, when you are in a, in a test, in exam, and, and you finish the exam before everybody. But you still have to wait until everybody finished. And then everybody goes out. So we still have to wait. Till the Yom al Qiyamah, till the Mahshar come, so everybody can get his deeds. But Allah says, take him down slowly in the earth. Why? Minha khalaqnahum, wa fiha u'iduhum, wa minha ukhrijuhum, or ukhrijuhum taratan ukhra. Because I created them from the earth, from the dust. And they must return to the dust. And they will be resurrected again. From the dust. So the angel will take this soul in a nice way, in a calm way, with the respect, with the honor, will take them, will take him down to the grave. All this distance, my dear brothers and sisters, all this will happen from the time your soul escape 
all the way to the time you will be in grave. That is the distance. That is the time. You will see all this beauty. When you come in the grave back, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send this to you two beautiful angels to ask you a question. What is the question? To ask him, to ask you who is your Lord? In the grave, your tongue doesn't speak anymore. Your body doesn't speak anymore. You, in the grave, your iman, your qalb will speak. Your righteous deed will speak. And you will say, my Lord is Allah. رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا I say my Lord is Allah and they will ask you who is the religion which deen you believe which faith you believe you say my deen is Islam إن الدين عند الله إسلام indeed the only deen accepted by Allah is Islam ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين and whoever look for any other deen beside the Islam will not be accepted so he said my deen he said what you thought about this man the man who came to you as a messenger he said he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I believed in him the angels say how did you know what makes you believe in this? You know the response, my dear brother and sister, is he will say, I read the book of Allah and I believe in it. My brother, you see the book of Allah? The book of Allah so will be an intercessor and a savior for you, even in a grave and even in mahshar. In mahshar, the people of the Quran will not be like everybody else. With the angels, special place. And Jannah, you will read, and Allah said, Iqra wartaqi, Iqra wartaqi, Jannah, The last place in Jannah, the level, last level in Jannah is the last ayah you have in your chest memorized. And the, each level of the Jannah between each other is 100 years distant my dear brothers and sisters imagine you are one of them the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says when allah re revealed this ayah yuthabbitu allahu alladhina amanu bil qawli thabit fi al hayat al dunya wa fi al akhirah he said allah keeps firm those who believe like you and me oh allah make us from the believers he said allah will keeps keeps firm those believers where with a firm word in this word in life you are steadfast. Nobody can shake you. And also in hereafter, the Prophet says hereafter in the grave. Because that is the place if you win. And then you are successful, my dear brother and sister. You know what will happen? After you spoke this, my brother and sister. After you answer this question, the voice will call out from the heaven. Who is that voice? According to the hadith, it's the voice of Allah. He said, my slave has spoken the truth. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah Azawajal says, start from here. My brother, start from here. Prepare for him bed from the Jannah. Give him clothes from the Jannah. Everything is coming, the package is coming from the Jannah, from your place. And he say, open for him the doors of the Jannah. Subhanallah, you already see in the Jannah. You enjoy, you see your place, you see the beauty. Can you imagine? It's just, it's just... Waiting a time to be resurrected and get in, in your family and you, you and your wealth and you, you enjoy it, but you will see it, everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, and, and hadith says, he will feel the breeze and the smell, the beautiful perfume is coming from the Jannah and the grave will be open to him, wide open, as long, as far as his eye can see. My brother, this is the haya of the barzakh. Yes, maybe you cannot, because your eyes is limited. But there is different eyes. The eye of that person is different. Because Allah has changed his eye to match with the Yawm Al-Akhirah. Imagine in Mahshar you will have a different sight. You will see everything. And you see angels and jinns. And you see Jah Jahannam is coming. And in Akhirah you will have different sight. Because in Akhirah your sight will be prepared to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people who can see the 
the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِنِنْ إِذِنْ نَاظِرَ إِلَى رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَ In that day the face will be shiny, will be bright, will be, will be with nur because they will see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اللهم إني أسألك لذة نظري إلى وجهك الكريم This is the dua the Prophet was making اللهم إني أسألك لذة لذة نظري إلى وجهك الكريم Oh Allah allowed me to taste the sweetness by looking in your honorable face in Yomar, inshallah, in Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters, all this will happen to that person from the time the soul will escape till the time Allah will open his grave and will make the grave rawdatun min riyadh al Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people. What we need to do, my brother, don't forget this is the time humble yourself, beg Allah, cry to Allah, read the book of Allah. My brother, it's only a few days. The reward is huge. Imagine if somebody say, listen, if you work for me one month, I will give you the salary of, for the rest of your life. And you will have the biggest casa for the rest of your life. And you have to not worry about food and transportation for the rest of your life. You, you, what do you think? You think you will say, I will not do it. You will stay day and night without sleep just to get that because you know the reward is huge. Allah has promised you and me, my brother, this reward. My brother, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you and me. So the question is, are we ready? Are we going to be among those people? Yes, we are. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His mercy, you see, He's given us few days few de 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 here, but the huge reward. Few action here, huge reward. Few places, five minutes, ten minutes here, huge reward. He just wants you to get in Jannah. And I will show you there are some timings. My dear brother and sister, there are some time and some places where Allah, some moments, you can earn thousands and thousands of the good deeds. Another treasure for success. And that we're going to see it, inshallah, in the next class. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts. And listen to this word and reflect on it and do the best of it. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.